Prepare to be freaked out. Are you ready? Because it's been almost 20 years since the first Harry Potter film hit the big screen. We'll give you a few seconds to recover from that shock. While the franchise might be close to two decades old, it still has some secrets up its sleeve. With characters so beloved, there's no shame in losing the actor behind them. You might not realize it, but some of your favorite actors have been hiding in your favorite franchise for quite some time. So let's investigate further and see if we can't find out which famous stars you didn't know we're in Harry Potter. This one is a blink and you miss it kind of deal. Oh my god! There's a brief scene where we see Hermione erase her mother's memories in order to protect her from the Death Eaters. The last time you watched it, you may have been crying so hard that you didn't catch that it was Michelle Fairley. Before Deathly Hallows, Fairley wasn't really known for much. She appeared in several small television roles and a few movies, but probably nothing you'd know. Then came her big break as Hermione's mom, for like three seconds of runtime. That being said, said, it is very impressive that they were able to make us cry in such a limited amount of time. Even Pixar can't do it that fast. <laughs> Where might you know her from? Well, a little television show called Game of Thrones. Lady Stark. Fairly played the Stark family matriarch Caitlin Stark for several years on the acclaimed series. For quite a while, she was the heart and soul of the series. When, spoilers, Ned Stark left the show after season one, Caitlin was the only one trying to keep the family together. She showed quite a lot of intelligence, tenacity, and heart in her time as one of the show's leading actresses. Unfortunately, that was all for naught because she was also written out in a bloody fashion. It's not all bad, though. At least she managed to leave the show before it turned into a ridiculous dragonfire mess. Seriously, if a scorpion managed to take out Rhaegal with no problem, how could Drogon destroy them all? Sorry, sorry, still not over it. Since then, she's appeared in several things like 24, Live Another Day, but nothing that reaches the heights of her earlier work. Surely the Witcher needs a loving but stern mother figure, right? Every time you think of Robert Pattinson, you probably think of Edward Cullen from Twilight. This is a fact that even Pattinson is annoyed by, despite the fact that the franchise made him famous. So it's forgivable if you've forgotten that Pattinson actually got his start in a different young adult franchise. He broke big with the part of Hufflepuff heartthrob Cedric Diggory. It's strange to think the two characters being played by the same actor. Edward was pretty dour, where Diggory was one of the most charismatic guys in Hogwarts. His his career took a bit of a hit because of Edward Cullen. Does anyone actually remember the movie Remember Me? It was truly terrible. For a while, it seemed like his best work was just going to be those cheesy perfume commercials. It's taken a lot of hard work, but Pattinson managed to resurrect his career and is back on the A-list. Get it? Resurrect? You know, because he played a vampire? Ugh, never mind. In 2019, he got quite a lot of attention for his role in The Lighthouse opposite Willem Dafoe. It was one of the most underrated films of the year, with people initially begging the Academy to nominate both stars. Too bad that didn't happen. Still, it affirms that Pattinson was absolutely more than just Edward Cullen. In 2020, he's following that up with the Christopher Nolan spy film Tenant. If it's anything like Inception, we're probably in for a wild ride. Judging from the careers of Tom Hardy and Joseph Gordon Levitt, he's only going to get more famous from here. It's pretty hard to outdo a Nolan film, but getting cast as the new Batman is surely a good way to try. Pattinson will star in Matt Reeves' take on the character. So he went from a Batman to THE Batman? Okay, that's the last one, no more. Vern Troyer is probably not a name you would recognize, but you'd likely recognize the actor. You definitely would if you were a fan of the Austin Powers movie franchise. You might not recognize him for his role in the Harry Potter franchise, though. He was the first actor to play Grip Hook in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It was a small role, but certainly a memorable one. 
Even though the character returned, Troyer wasn't asked to. Still, we can always remember him for his role he's more famous for. He played Mini-Me, Dr. Evil's clone, in the last two Austin Powers movies. His performances there earned him quite a bit of fame. It's pretty hard to forget that rap scene with him and Mike Myers in Goldmember. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. They just don't make movies that love to be silly for silly sake like that anymore. After that, most of his appearances were just as himself. Unfortunately, he passed away in the year 2018, so we won't get to see him reprise either of his most famous roles. The name Domhnall Gleeson probably doesn't ring much of a bell for you. You definitely would know the famous ginger actor if you saw a picture of him. He got his big break as Bill Weasley in the Harry Potter film franchise. His part was seriously cut from what it was in the books, but he still made quite the impression on fans. From there, he starred in several critically acclaimed movies. The first was the criminally underrated sci-fi romantic comedy About Time. If you haven't seen it, go watch it now. It's really adorable. The second was the artificial intelligence thriller Ex Machina. It's considered to be one of the best science fiction movies ever made. Despite all that, the role you would probably recognize him from is his turn as the First Order's General Hux. He played the role of Kylo Ren's evil rival throughout all three films of the sequel trilogy. Though, let's be real, he never got to outdo that Starkiller base speech. He knew he was only getting one big monologue in this franchise, and boy did he take it for all it was worth. What's crazy is that he's actually the son of another famous Harry Potter star. His father is none other than Brendan Gleeson. If you don't know already, that's Mad-Eye Moody himself. We can only imagine the Gleeson family meets up once a year to watch all the movies and share filming secrets. Do you think Brendan Gleeson could really see through that fake eye? These movies did have crazy budgets, so it could have happened. The younger Gleeson came dangerously close to appearing in a third beloved sci-fi property. The rumor was that he was briefly considered for the role of the Doctor from Doctor Who. That was before the role was awarded to Jodie Whittaker. While Whittaker is amazing in the role, it's a little sad. The Doctor always wanted to be Ginger. So close. Speaking of the Doctor, let's talk all about David Tennant. It's possible there is no British actor that is quite as beloved as Tennant right now. Oh. Most of that comes from his epic turn as the 10th Doctor in Doctor Who. Look at these people. There have been many different kinds of doctors over the years, but none were quite as super heroic as Tennant's was. If that wasn't enough, he also played one of the best villains in the MCU as the despicable Kilgrave in Jessica Jones. Sometimes an actor is just a little too good, especially if it's a creepy role. He also played the charismatic demon Crowley in the Amazon miniseries Good Omens. It's probably the role fans have freaked out about the most ever since he played the Doctor. With all of these big franchises under his belt, you may have missed his beloved and quiet role in Broadchurch. There he plays an angsty detective opposite the Crown's Sophie Turner and 13th Doctor Jodie Whittaker. If you've never seen it, give it a shot. Although, fair warning, it's very sad. With all of these amazing performances behind him, it's fine if you've forgotten his Harry Potter role. He played Barty Crouch Jr. in Goblet of Fire. That's right, he was the creepy tongue guy. Wild, right? Tennant has several more television roles coming up, but rumor has it that he has more big franchise work coming up as well. Some say that he may be the villain of the second Doctor Strange movie, or even a cameo in The Batman. While all of that is well and good, can't he at least pop back by Doctor Who and meets the 13th Doctor? Pretty please? There's one actor who appeared throughout the Harry Potter franchise who is a bit more famous than you probably know. Warwick Davis enchanted us as Professor Flitwick even though he didn't have very many scenes. What's really strange is that he had more lines in his second Harry Potter role than his first. He replaced Vern Troyer as Griphook for the final two movies in the franchise. He had more screen time with this performance than he did with Flitwick or Troyer did the first time around. Perhaps the reason why is that people finally figured out just how famous he was. You see, Davis got his start as everyone's favorite Ewok, 
Wicked in Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Sorry, Weechi fans, he's just not as cool. Not only that, but if you look hard enough, you'll see cameo appearances by him in several other Star Wars movies. He even reappears as an Ewok in Rise of Skywalker. He follows up Return of the Jedi with a starring role in the fantasy epic Willow. Before Lord of the Rings came out, Willow was considered one of the better fantasy movies. It's a bit dated now. Word is he'll be reprising his role in a new Willow television series. Hopefully it's more like Dark Crystal Age of Resistance and less the last season of Game of Thrones. Yes, still not over it! While most of the characters he plays are heavily made up characters, there's one leading role you maybe haven't seen. He starred as a fictional version of himself in Ricky Gervais's criminally underrated Life too short. It only got one season, but it's quite funny in that cringe humor that Gervais excels at so much. If you like the BBC version of The Office or Extras, be sure to check it out. He even makes fun of his roles in both Star Wars and Harry Potter. Voldemort showed up on the big screen during The Goblet of Fire and was instantly one of the best movie villains. He stands among other titans like Darth Vader, Thanos, and that one guy from Highlander. That being said, there's no shame if you can't recognize the actor who plays him. That's because, unlike Voldemort, actor Ralph Fiennes actually has a nose. Or he's never had a nose and every film he has one is fake! It's probably the first way. Fiennes has had one of the most consistently successful careers in Hollywood. He got famous in the 90s due to his performances in The Schindler's List and The English Patient. After that, he had a famously creepy turn as the serial killer villain in Red Dragon. He's also been in other famous movies like The Reader, Coriolanus, and The Grand Budapest Hotel. Now he seems to have replaced his need to be an evil wizard for a desire to be a spy. He was brought in as the new M to replace Judi Dench in Skyfall. Since then, he's played the character in every James Bond movie. He's also slated to play a super spy in the new spy prequel, The Kingsman. It's like Kingsman, but with like an extra space and an S. No matter how many movies he does, he'll likely never have one as instantly famous as Voldemort. Though he probably doesn't miss having to act with those stupid dots on his face. There you have it, all the stars that you forgot were in the Harry Potter movies. Which one was your favorite? Did we leave any good ones out? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more from The Binger.